today we're going to be talking about developing a winning lead nurturing strategy with Green Rope. My name is Alessandra Guyvin. I'm the marketing manager here at Green Rope. You can find me at Alessandra at greenrope.com or go ahead and follow us on, at, at Green Rope on Instagram and Twitter. And of course, if you're on LinkedIn or Facebook, we do have a company page as well as a Facebook company page. And then if you're a user or you'd like to get involved in our users group on LinkedIn, um, you can always do that as well. Um, that's a great place for to ask questions and to connect with other users as well as uh, as well as to get up to date um, and real time updates on any upgrades or any new features in the system. Uh, so that's, I highly encourage everyone to get involved and engage with us on social as well. Uh, but for, for today's topic, we're going to be focusing on lead nurturing and specifically creating a solid strategy to help you, um, to help you connect, engage, and convert your leads into paying customers. Um, of course, as we all know, um, lead nurturing is for your new leads and your prospects, uh, but the nurturing doesn't stop once they become a customer. So a lot of this information you can take into uh, the customer journey after they convert into paying customers as well. Uh, but today we're going to focus on um, the first, the the first part of the funnel or the first part of the relationship, which is the awareness, consideration, and decision, and how we create a strategy to take those leads uh, from awareness and through that funnel into paying customers. So the agenda. Uh, so what's what's on our plate today? What are we going to be talking about? Uh, first, we're going to talk about what is uh, what is lead nurturing, and we're going to look at some stats on why lead nurturing is so effective and why every business should have a solid lead nurturing strategy implemented into their process. Um, we'll talk about the benefits of lead nurturing. Uh, we'll go into how to create a lead nurturing strategy go into the different components of lead nurturing um, and the, the different tools that you use. Uh, then we're gonna look inside the Green Rope system. We're gonna look at some of our own processes and how we've set them up to better nurture our own leads. Um, and then we'll do a Q&A at the end. Um, so for everyone that's new to GoToWebinar or GoToMeeting, uh, you do have a questions box. So you'll just uh, type in your questions into that box. You can type them in throughout the webinar. I will be answering those at the end, um, but feel free to, as your questions come up, just type them into that box. All right, so let's get started. So big stat here um, from VentureBeat Insight, 80% of marketers using automation software generate more leads. 77% convert more of those leads. So one of the huge components of lead nurturing is marketing automation. Um, and I'm sure that a lot of you um, realize that. Um, and so a, one of the biggest tools uh, for lead nurturing is how you automate these processes. And we're gonna go a little bit more into that um, as we move through this webinar. So what is lead nurturing? Lead nurturing is the process of deepening your relationship with your leads at every stage of the funnel and throughout the entire customer journey. Lead nurturing integrates sales and marketing to help drive your buyer to convert. Lead nurturing uses CRM data and marketing automation to educate, engage, and convert. So lead nurturing is really about you know, nurturing those contacts. So just like you would water a plant, water a flower, water a tree to grow, you're essentially doing the same thing. And just like you have to water or you water a plant or nurture your friendships with daily touch points, weekly touch points, whatever it might be that's appropriate for that particular contact, um, you'll need to do that, do the same with your leads and customers. And this is going to include multiple touch points throughout the entire buyer's journey. So we're talking, you know, personal touch points, automated touch points, um, along with social media, blogging, content, newsletters, etc. So to go through a couple of stats, 57% uh, of marketers say lead nurturing is the most valuable feature of automation software. Um, so that's a great stat, and I truly believe that to be true. Um, it is, marketing automation is so powerful, um, but one of the biggest things like we saw in that last um, stat 
is that lead nurturing plays or automation plays a huge part in the lead nurturing in your lead nurturing strategy um, so having one in place especially an integrated automation system with your crm is critical uh, for the success and the strength of your lead nurturing strategy uh, another stat here is targeting users with content relevant to their position along the buying process yields 72 percent higher conversion rates that's a huge number and i think we can all agree that we'd all like to see 72 percent higher conversion rates um, and so that comes down to not only your automated processes and your workflows but the content that you're delivering at each stage of the buying cycle so the important part to think about that is what content do people need you know when they're first learning about your software what do they need when they've had a demo or when they've learned about your software and then they're in that consideration phase um, and then of course what content do they need to really make that decision to either push them over the edge to convert or past conversion when they're onboarding. So these are all really important stages to think about in terms of the content that you're delivering to these leads or to these customers. So let's talk about the little bit about the benefits of lead nurturing. Uh, so of course, increased productivity. You can turn manual tasks into automated ones with workflows, drip campaigns, your customer journeys, et cetera. Um, have your CRM remind you to follow up and never let a lead slip through the cracks. Um, so again, with when you automate what used to be manual tasks, you increase your productivity. Plus, your salespeople at the end of the day or your marketing people don't have to stop, send specific emails to specific contacts um, one at a time. Instead, these can be triggered based on behaviors or based on triggers um, that, uh, that are caused by your leads and or customers. Um, it streamlines your process. Uh, so you create consistent lead nurturing processes. Leads will go through their customer journeys, receiving the right messages at the right time. This creates a consistent customer experience. Um, so instead of you know each salesperson handling leads differently, each lead is going to get a consistent experience throughout the entire process. Now that doesn't mean that they're just getting the same messages throughout the process. This process can be personalized. It just means that the consistency, um, the consistency of this process is, is the same. So basically your leads, instead of you know one lead going through an entire drip campaign or entire journey receiving these very rele relevant messages while the other one you know is missed out or does not get certain messages that they might need um, it just creates a streamlined process so that everyone is receiving the same amount of touch points at the same frequencies when they need that to really help drive your leads along that sales funnel Benefits continued. Um, so better personalization. So personalize the customer experience and your content to meet the needs of your leads and customers. You're using CRM data and behavioral triggers. So for example, you can personalize the customer experience. If someone clicks on a specific link to learn more about a specific product, product you can then trigger another set or series of emails to go out to them that would be relevant to what they're interested in. Whereas someone reading a, the same message might click on a separate link or might not click at all. Therefore, you'd send them on a different path than the person who did click. Uh, this is just a way that you can personalize the customer journey. Now, when we talk about better personalization in terms of the actual targeting of the message, you can do that with the CRM data that you collect. Um, all of your CRM data, all of those user-defined fields that you spend so much time setting up and getting really granular with the data you want to collect, you can use that data in every aspect of your customer journey. So what that means is you can take, you know, you can take specifics like where they live, um, how many children they have, their interests, and input that data into your messages to better help you like personalize and connect with that user, make them feel a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a person rather than just a number going through a series of you know blasted emails. 
um, higher conversion rates. So our the stats that I we shared earlier, they don't lie. Um, you will see higher conversion rates if you do um, offer more relevant and personalized touch points. Uh, better reporting and tracking. So again, this is huge. Uh, gain better insight into your sales and marketing efforts and how they actively affect your conversion rates. You want to know what is driving your conversions. And if your lead nurturing process is not helping your conversion rates, then you need to know that and you need to, to brainstorm or come up with other strategies to help either um, better your lead nurturing strategy, change it up, add touch points, take away touch points, um, create different journeys, whatever it is, um, having the analytics behind that process are going to help you understand what is actually driving your conversions. And that, at the end of the day, is one of the most important things um, that us as you know, entrepreneurs, business owners, marketers, salespeople need to know. So lead nurturing is beneficial for both the lead, the customer, and your team. When you spend the time to develop a lead nurturing strategy, you will see your business operate and grow in entirely new ways. And what I mean by it's, an, it's beneficial for both the lead, the customer, and your team, well, for one, it's obviously beneficial for the lead because you're, you're providing them with really relevant, accurate information about your product and your customer and the pain point that you solve. Um, so they are getting a stream of information about your about your business, about your product, about your service, uh, keeping you on top of mind, and just giving them the information or the fuel they need to make a proper buying decision. Um, for your team, it's it helps streamline your process and makes your team more efficient and more productive. Um, so this means your marketing team is more efficient, your sales team is more productive. Um, so there's a lot of very, um, very significant benefits on both sides of the table. And when you are creating efficiency and consistency within your business, you that can be seen from the outside as a lead or a customer. A lead or a customer, and I'm sure we've all been there in a business, you know, when we're, you know, evaluating a product or, you know, we're speaking with a customer service rep or or we're speaking with a salesperson, you can tell if they've got a fragmented process. Um, you might get emails that aren't relevant or someone calls you up after you've already purchased a product. So you can definitely tell, you know, we've all been customers, we've all been leads of some sort of sales process. And, um, you know, it's definitely very obvious when the business does not have a streamlined or a consistent process, or if the sales and the marketing are on two different pages. So that brings us to building a healthy um, and effective lead nurturing strategy. So my biggest and first tip um, is going to be aligning your sales and marketing. Gone are the days when an explicit line separated sales and marketing. Today, marketing plays a much larger role in the sales process than ever before. And because of this transformation, the only way to create an effective lead nurturing strategy is to align your sales and marketing team. Each needs to understand the other with access to, access to both data sets to better nurture leads and customers. Um, so this is probably one of the biggest issues that, you know, we, we see. And just because before, you know, we had such integrated systems, uh, businesses worked in very fragmented departments or divisions, um, or as we like to call silos. Um, this is, can't, is not realistic in today's business environment, especially in the age of digital transformation. Um, because, I mean, as I think that we all know, the digital plays such a large part in both the sales and the marketing process that marketing is highly involved in the sales process. And sales, their strength comes in when it comes to connecting and creating those human touch points um, and really building that personal relationship with the with the lead after the lead has built a relationship with the brand um, so it's kind of bringing in that human touch point where where marketing can try to do that but at the end of the day it's a person to person um, person to person relationship um, and so that's why it's so important for to align your sales and your marketing teams plus 
sales gathers a lot of data, a lot of very personal data that marketing are not can't always collect. And marketing gathers a lot of information about the lead before that lead is passed on to sales. Um, and so when that lead is passed on to sales, the salesperson has a huge uh, plethora of data and information about that lead um, to work with so that they can better personalize their experience or their pitch or their demo uh, to meet the need, needs of that particular client. The next one is to develop a strategy that incorporates different types of touch points. And this includes phone calls, follow-ups, personal emails, print, and email and content marketing. Uh, there are more, but for the sake of this webinar, we're just gonna focus on uh, the email and the sales workflows. Um, but again, so this is going to be, um, this is going to be, the customer journey is gonna be a mix of your workflows, your drip and your drip campaigns, your email, your content marketing, and of course, print. And I don't know if any of you, um, tuned in into our webinar with Postalytics, they do print um, direct mail automation. So that's another great tool that you can use that brings in that personalization and that automation um, into the print marketing sphere, which I think is a huge um, benefit for today um, in today's environment, just because we're so inundated um, you know, with all of the online marketing, that it's kind of nice to get stuff in your mail these days that's directly targeted towards um, what we want. Um, so if you haven't checked that out, check out that webinar, I highly recommend you do so if you are interested in, in doing more things with direct mail or print marketing. Um, another uh, way that you are going to want to uh, build a good strategy is to gather lead intelligence data. You need to get as much data as possibly can. So get that demographic data and that behavioral data as each lead moves throughout the buyer's fun funnel. And so what I mean there is just, you know, obviously collect your demographic data that you can, um, but also the behavioral data. And what that means is website visits. So having a um, a strategy that integrates your website analytics is huge because now you can see which pages your leads are visiting, what are they spending the most time on, um, what are they interested in, this knowledge is going to be huge. Um, another behavioral would be either open in their clicks, um, what emails are they opening, what are they clicking on, um, how are they engaging with that content. And then the last one here that I have is to create relevant content. Um, create content that matters at each stage of the funnel and include different types of content based on data. Um, so obviously that's going to be um, a huge one and we are gonna talk about that in more depth on the next slide. Uh, but you want to, um, and so for the funnel that we're gonna be working with today, we're gonna focus on awareness, consideration, and decision. And we're gonna look at some content um, that you can produce at each stage of that funnel. Hi. So here's a little chart that I drew up. Um, so we've got uh, the buyer stages, awareness, consideration, and decision. So again, um, you know, we you can have a much more complex sales funnel, but for the sake of this webinar, I want to keep it pretty simple because um, you can break each of these down into different stages as well. Uh, but uh, let's just talk about you know this chart for the for for now. So buyer stages. Um, so we've got awareness, consideration, and decision. And then on the left hand side there, we've got user behavior their research stage, the content types, and key terms uh, that you can use. So user behavior at the awareness stage. So they've realized and expre expressed the potential problem opportunity. So they're realizing that they've got an issue that they need to solve, and they are looking for solutions that are going to solve this problem. And they're looking for opportunities to solve this problem. So now they're just looking for what is the what is the solution to the problem. They may maybe haven't looked at vendors yet, but they're becoming more aware of the different vendors. Um, so they're looking at the third party information about their realized problem and opportunity. Um, at this stage, this is a really great um, a really great uh, opportunity for you to send out ebooks, um, editorial content, so your blog. 
um, and educational content, landing pages. So this might be your PPC campaigns, uh, Facebook ads, Twitter ads, uh, contributed articles, so thought leadership pieces. This is a big one. Um, so there's a lot of different websites that you can use to distribute your content or to share your content. Um, some of them, some of the big ones are LinkedIn. Um, so you can put out your own thought leadership thought leadership pieces on LinkedIn um, and publish them and share them on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a really great platform for this. Um, another one is Medium. Medium, uh, you can share um, and engage with a lot of different thought leadership pieces. Also, these, um, these two websites get, at the end of the day, they get a lot more traffic than your blog does. So they're a really great way to get people to your website or to your blog eventually. Um, and some key terms here um, to use, and again, I mean, this is up to your content team and to your own creativity, um, but some of the, the terms that come to mind when we're thinking about sort of the awareness stage are improve, optimize, prevent, solve, streamline, organize, empower, increase, revenue and integrate. Um, so those are some of our key terms. Uh, but as you can see, all of these terms are really focused on solving a specific problem. So if we go over to the consideration phase, um, we see that the user behavior, they have a clearly defined problem. They, they know, how, they, they're getting an idea of how to um, solve the issue and they're understanding more, um, and they're understanding what they want to do uh, to solve that issue and now they're looking at the available solution so that's in their research um, so they've maybe identified um, a few that they want to look at maybe get a demo they're looking on their websites they're looking at their social media um, they're getting a little bit more involved with specific solutions to that that are going to solve their problem um, some content types here are comparison charts so comparing your solution or your service to that of your competitor. Um, expert guide. So this is gonna get a little bit more granular than your sort of top of funnel content pieces that really just talk about the problem. Now we're gonna be talking about pain points and real expert um, information on how to better solve, um, solve the pain point that they're looking to, to, to deal with. Um, interaction with sales and support. So this is definitely where we're going to see our sales team jump into the into the game here. Um, they're going to maybe do a demo, start uh, engaging on a person-to-person -person, uh, level with this lead. Um, case studies. Case studies are a really powerful tool, um, kind of highlighting how your solution has helped clients in the past and showcase what your solution, your service, your product can do for them as well. Uh, drip campaigns. So again, once they've maybe had a demo or if they've, they've inquired about more information on your website and they're looking to learn more about your website design service, you can drop them into a drip campaign that talks them, takes them all through your process and shows them what you're capable of. Um, and then, of course, your ed educational vendor-specific blog post. So now we can actually get a little bit more into what does your specific solution, service, and or product do for them. Um, and that's, that's where you can showcase, you know, ease of use, um, the intuitiveness of your platform, um, your service, the benefits, how you specifically do things to see if, so the lead can find out if they're a good match for your solution. Um, so a couple of terms here that we came up with is tool, software, application, success, easy to use, custom, customer service. So these actually go into specific benefits of working with your company, with your brand, with your solution. Then, of course, the final stage, and this is the stage we always want to get to, is the decision stage. So this is where we are. They are finally deciding to convert and become uh, a paid customer and hopefully have a very long-term relationship with your company. So they've defined the solution and their strategy. Uh, maybe not their full strategy, because as we know, especially with, you know, if you're implementing CRM or marketing automation, that is much longer of a process typically um, than maybe, you know, um, something else. But they've defined what they want to do and what they want to move forward with. Um, so some research here is they're going to look at, again, your case studies. They're going to look at reviews, um, so vendor reviews, um, and then maybe some how-to. So get a better look uh, in the system. Another, um, another thing is if you've got 
for example, an application like we do, um, you know, this, do getting a trial is also going to be a powerful, uh, powerful at this stage. Uh, some content types again are some vendor comparisons, free trials, um, educational drip campaigns, live demos, product demonstrations, how to's, tutorials, implementation guides, such. So now we're kind of showing them what they can expect when they do decide to work with us and or if they have decided already. Um, so some key terms, pros and cons, review, comparison, customer support, et cetera. Um, so those are kind of the big, um, a kind of a bird's eye view of the different content types um, at each stage of the funnel and why you want to uh, create that content at each stage of the funnel. You know, because for example, if you were to send something that's very broad about how to solve a problem at the decision phase, that would be really relevant for them because they've already gone way far past that particular part where they're just trying to explore different options. Now they need to know what can you do for them and how. Um, and so that's why you have to be very conscious of the content that you're sending out at each stage of your funnel. So now we're gonna talk a little bit more about the key components of your lead nurturing strategy. So number one, your CRM. Your CRM houses all of your contacts and all the information about them, including both demographic and behavioral data. You will use this data to improve your campaigns. So that's a big one. Um, it's, you know, a CRM is also going to store your, their activities, any notes, the entire history of that relationship. And so you'll want to use this data throughout the customer lifestyle to engage and build deeper, more valuable relationships. Content. Content is what educates, informs, and persuades your contacts. From blog posts to eBooks or just simple emails, content is king. Lean nurturing is all about sharing relevant con content <laughs> and to help inspire, con <clears throat> inspire your leads to make the decision to convert and become a paying customer. And also works very well to upsell your cu current customers. You will need to create different types of content for all stages of your funnel. With CRM and marketing automation, you can personalize the content based on the data you have. Um, and if any of you are um, have used GreenRope or the email template, which I'm sure most of you have, um, we've got something that's called dynamic data. And this is actually a great way to use CRM data to automatically personalize um, the emails or the messages that you send out. Uh, we'll take a little. We'll look at. Um, we'll look at that as well. Uh, your journeys. So the customer experience and the is the sum of all of the interactions between your brand and your contacts. Your contacts, of course, include your leads, prospects, customers, and anyone else who interacts with your organization. And a great customer experience start with understanding your customer journey. And that is where customer journeys come into play. Once you understand the customer journey, you can develop your campaigns and workflows accordingly. So the customer journey is going to help send your contacts down different paths depending on their actions, their demographics, campaign IDs, and more. We'll take a look at some journey um, journeys in action here in just a second. Um, so in terms of the, the your journey, your journey is really big in the planning stage. So before you de develop any of your campaigns, you need to set your objectives and establish your customer paths, your journeys. So your journeys are going to include or may include, and they, you know, again, they're completely customized to your specific business needs, um, but they can uh, include a mix of drip campaigns, workflows, emails, and other personal touch points. The path the user take largely depends on their actions and or decisions. And this journey includes every aspect of the journey, not just singular campaigns. Um, and for, for us, you know, a journeys can be triggered by via sign-up forms, manually by workflows um, and if you're you know in speaking specifically to green rope journeys are not group specific um, but a journey can drop or remove a contact um, into or from a group and we'll look at that a little bit um, as well and then another really important point is a journey has a beginning middle and an end uh, but it also very much takes into account what happens in between and again we'll we'll dig a little bit more uh, a little bit deeper into that when we go into the platform and take a look at a journey in action. So um, 
with journeys, um, a couple of the benefits there are it really ties your sales, marketing, and operation departments together. So remember how I talked about aligning your sales and marketing? So once you've aligned your sales and marketing, um, the journey helps you connect those two in the overall customer experience. Um, so that's really important. Um, then of course you can increase your collaboration amongst your team members and with your clients. So, you know, a journey, because it integrates and it moves people throughout different departments and different parts of the customer experience, um, you know, you're going to, that, that lead's going to be talking to different people throughout that journey. Um, and so that's why it increase, increases that collaboration and that engagement with your company. Um, you're also going to learn a lot more about how leads and customers engage with your brand and flow through your funnel. And so that's just some of the ways that journeys are going to help. And I also did a blog, um, I hosted a webinar last year um, covering journeys, drip campaigns, and workflows. Um, and so I highly recommend looking at that one as well. Um, it goes into really, um, specific, really um, significant specifics about all of these. Um, so I would definitely check that out. Um, and if you email me, I'm happy to send that along. But you can also find it on our website or our Vimeo page. Uh, so now I want to talk about a little bit more about drip, drip campaigns. So drip campaigns happen at the execution stage. Um, so while journeys are at your planning stage, um, drip campaigns are at the ex execution stage. So once you've established your strategy um, and you have a bird's eye view of what your customer journeys look like, you can break your efforts down into campaigns. Um, so drip campaigns, um, as I'm sure most of you know, are a series of emails that go over that go out over a predetermined time frame. Um, in Greenrobe, drip campaigns are group specific. Uh, they can be part of the customer journey. Uh, they can also be activated by a journey. Uh, and, and drip campaigns are a really great lead nurturing tool. They're also a really great onboarding tool. Um, the difference between drip campaigns and journeys though, um, for the sake of this, is why you want to add drip campaigns into your journeys um, is because you can trigger specific drip campaigns throughout a customer journey. So for example, um, if someone you know, comes in wanting more information about your products and services, uh, you send them an initial email, they click, they wanna learn more about your website design, for example, um, then they can be dropped into a drip campaign that talks only about your website design versus your other services. So this is actually delivering them uh, better, more relevant content. All right, and so the last one I want to, or before we get into one of the more important testing is workflows. So workflows help integrate your sales and marketing touch points, creating consistent processes for your team uh, while providing a consistent experience to the customer. Workflows are, are huge. Um, so they are at the planning and execution stage. Um, and so once you've established the strategy and a bird's eye view of your customer journeys, um, you can now break down your efforts into touch points, kind of like drip campaigns, but you know, we want to look at more of the sales process and the touch, different touch points uh, with workflows. So if a new click lead clicks on a request a demo button in one of your campaigns, you would trigger a sales follow-up workflow that would notify and assign a salesperson the task of following up. So that's an, a, an example of what you would use a workflow for. So workflows consist of series of activities that are assigned to particular people within your organization. Uh, workflow activities typically follow each other in the order that the activity or task needs to be completed. Um, so again, it's creating that consistent process. Uh, workflows make up part of the customer journey. Uh, workflows can be activated by a journey as well. Uh, they can also activate a journey, stop, pause, and resume a journey as well. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, workflows can also activate a drip campaign, and drip campaigns can also activate um, workflows. So keep that in mind. Um, there's so many ways that you can customize your automation and your process. It really comes down to your end goal of what you want to deliver to that lead or to that specific segment. Um, so, and, and workflows really help to bridge the gap between sales and marketing uh, by streamlining and integrating those two processes. Um, so then finally, uh, we want to get to number six, testing. Uh, if you do not test your efforts, you will never know if they are actually helping your conversions. Test everything. So test different workflows, test different journeys, um, you know, test your drip campaigns. You need to be consistently 
on top of this process in order to maximize your results. Um, it's This is not a set it and forget it type of um, endeavor. It really does take uh, management. And that's not to say that you need to spend every day, all day on this, uh, but I would definitely revisit um, your analytics at least once a month just to see um, how you can improve on your strategy. Uh, you, We can always improve and because we're always gave, gathering more data, and especially if you're new to this um, and you don't have as much data as you'd like at the moment, you're gonna notice that what you think might happen now might be very different from two, um, in two months. Um, and so as you collect and ga gather that data, both demographic and behavioral, um, you know, you'll want to update and revise your strategy as well. All right, so now we're going to take a look at these tools in action. All right, so for those of you um, who are Green Rope users, or for those of you who are new, I'm going to do. I'm going to um, start from the beginning. So we're going to log into uh, Green Rope here. Sorry, it's moving a little slowly. And while I wait for um, this to load, sorry, it's taking a minute. Um, I'm going to look at the questions here. Um, I hope everyone has been able to see my screen, um, but I'm definitely, um, I, these slides um, are more of just an outline, um, which I will be sending, but if you want to review the webinar as well, um, I will be sending out the recording. And Lisa, I... Yes, I'm definitely going to be sharing these slides via email. Um, if anyone who registered for our webinars always gets a follow-up um, with a copy of the, of the slides and a link to the recording as well. Um, and then, of course, if you ever want to um, you know, email me personally uh, to ask any questions, I'm always happy to help. Okay, so now that we are in Green Rope, um, let's take a look at... Um, one of my groups here and the first thing i want to look at is um our our journeys so so journeys can be found under automation journeys um this is a complex journey so let's let's load a new one here let's load a more simple journey Okay, so this is a good one. What happened? Sorry about that. All right, so here we go. So here's a relatively simple lead nurturing journey. And we use this for, um, we use this to uh, specifically designed for our people interested in IT um, or that's their job function. Um, and so as many of you know, Green Rope has a lot of different uh, functionality, um, including your sales, marketing and operations uh, but another segment we have is making sure um, it, it are our IT professionals and they want to learn more about how the system works from the back end um, and they they um, 
they have a big part in the buying process. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're providing relevant content that's specific to their job um, so that they understand um, you know, how the system works. And so this is a journey that we've set up to help inform and educate our IT professionals on more of the specifics on the back end, um, our security um, and more technological questions. Um, so here you can see that they start the journey. So what this is actually started, um, you know, when, if a person is an IT professional or a salesperson manually activates this journey. Um, so the first email that they're going to get is the, the first email that we have that's all about green rope uh, for inner IT professionals. Um, and so we can see this, this email here. And so we can see what email that is, and you can see how you set that up there. And then we can see if we've got, you know, decision if they clicked on a specific link, and if they clicked on a specific link that takes it to our Green Rope for IT page. So we've got a web web page on our um, website that actually contains all of this information. So if they just want to go to one place to look at all this information, instead of having to um, go through the entire email series, they can actually just click on this link, it will take them to that page, and it will end them on this journey. So we, if they already have the information on the webpage and they've gone to that website, we don't need to send them to repeat and be repetitive and just send them that information continuously into their inbox. We wanna make it easy for them and not bombard them with emails. Um, and so we've made it so that if they do click on that uh, link, they will not be sent that email. And then that goes out through the entire customer journey. Um, so that's an example of, of a pretty simple uh, lead nurturing journey that is specific to a particular uh, segment. Uh, now the next thing I wanna look at are our drip campaigns. So drip campaigns can also be found in under automation in drip campaigns. So this is a sample lead nurturing drip campaign that I've set up for this webinar. So we can see here, and I'm gonna click edit uh, because you have more, you can get more of an idea of what you can set up here. Um, so here we've got our drip campaign. This is a lead, our lead nurturing sample drip campaign. So let's just say that this is a person who wants to learn more about marketing in Green Rope. And we want to give them all the information about all of our marketing tools um, and, uh, and not specifically set them up um, and not specifically, uh, you know, send them different information based on their actions. We want them to get all of this information. Um, and so this is why we would use a drip campaign. So you, you can see here that we send, uh, once this uh, drip campaign is activated or once they're uh, dropped into this group, so for example, let's say, um, and I'm gonna use a, a specific, specific example to Green Rope. Um, let's say a person um, gets a demo and they, uh, activate a trial to try Green Room. And we have a series, a drip campaign that goes out that talks all about the system. But let's say they're a marketing professional and they wanna learn more about the marketing aspects of Green Room. Well, if in that drip, that initial drip campaign that they get, they click on the link to learn more about our marketing features, then that will be automatically, it dropped into this marketing group and rece start receiving these marketing messages. Um, and that's the same, the same goes, for example, with a journey. So if a journey is, like a new lead journey is activated and they want, their interest is marketing or they came from a, or they clicked on a link where they'd like to learn more about marketing uh, within that journey, then we they can also be dropped into this marketing group and start receiving these marketing messages. Um, so you can see how that tailors or per, better personalizes um, the, their overall customer journey. Um, so here we can see we've got, okay, the drip mark email number one. Um, and I have that activating a workflow. So my lead nurturing workflow. So this, and I'll go show you this workflow when, as soon as we're finished um, reviewing the drip campaigns. Uh, but you can see here that we can see the email. 
that is being sent out. We can see when it's sent out, and then we can see that it activates a lead nurturing workflow. So this is going to, this right here, this drip campaign is going to uh, activate a human touch point from me. So as we'll see when we go look at this workflow, that the first activity is going to be a follow-up phone call. Um, so as the salesperson or the rep that's handling this lead, I'll either send them a personal email or a phone call, however you set up your workflow. Uh, we can see here, so I'm delaying this next message for two calendar days. So two days after they receive the first one, they'll receive drip message number two. We can see what email that is. Oh, look at that, I'm talking about journeys. Um, so there, and we can see that. And we don't have it activating a workflow because this workflow has already been activated. And then of course, we've got a third one in the drip. It's gonna go out two days after. Um, and so we will, um, again, uh, they'll receive this email. You can see the email that goes out. And I, again, I don't have it activating a particular workflow because the my sales workflow, um, has already been uh, activated. So now, if we dive in um, to the workflows, let's head on over to that lead nurturing workflow that was activated by this drip campaign. So again, we're, we're working in the automation tab here um, for all of this. Um, so here we're gonna go into the workflow manager. I'm gonna take, start taking a look at the questions too. Um, Rolf, uh, yes, we do record these webinars and uh, you'll definitely be able to catch up with, with all of this in the recording. Um, so now we're gonna go into this wor workflow. So here it is, Alessandra's lead nurturing workflow. So this was the workflow that was activated by that particular drip campaign. And please feel free to start inputting questions that you have into the questions box um, because it's right after this, I'm going to go back to the slides and start answering all of your questions. Uh, okay, so this is going to be uh, our, our workflow. Um, you'll be able to build your workflow here, um, your alerts, um, sending actions, um, your trigger action, so how this is triggered. We know that it's triggered uh, by that drip campaign, but keep in mind uh, that you, know, you can change um, drip campaigns, uh, you can pause a journey, resume a journey, stop a journey um, with here, here. Uh, modify contact, so if they activate this workflow, does it change the data that you have for them? Uh, but what I wanna focus on here um, is the workflow activities. Uh, so after that, that uh, workflow's activated, once they got that first message in that drip campaign, I get a CRM activity to follow up with a phone call. So I might wanna ask them, you know, if they have questions about marketing or if they'd like more about a marketing functionality. Then I invite them to our LinkedIn group. Um, so that that they can get you know up to date information on any uh, on the system. I'll in, you know I'll add them on LinkedIn, etc. Send a personal email. So I want to do this after I've followed up with a phone call. And then have any additional questions about the platform. Um, and then about a week later, I'll follow up with a phone call. Um, again, these are very specific to however you want to set up your process, but this is an example of what a, a, a very active workflow might look like um, that includes all of these different human touch points. And I, one thing I do want to note here is that in this personal email, so you can make it so that it's a CRM activity to remind you to send a personal email, or you can have it send the personal email for you. And you can see, you can select which email you'd like to send. So for I've sent, I've selected my lead nurturing email number two. Um, so this my this will automatically go out when my um, when this CRM activity uh, comes up on set on the seventh business day. So now I'm gonna head 
back to the slides. Uh, now that we've gotten a little uh, bit deeper into, uh, we dug a little deeper into the platform. And I would like to open it up to questions. Um, and so again, you can personally reach out to me at alessandra at greenrope.com. Um, or you can also follow us on Instagram or Twitter at greenrope. Um, and again, uh, please join our LinkedIn users group uh, as well as our uh, company page and our Facebook group. So our Q&A. So all you have to do right now is just type your questions into the questions box and do go to webinar panel and I will answer the questions as they come in. Um, a few things I'd like to note as well is we do have an in-depth webinar that Dan Kim, our um, client services director, just did last month that talks all about workflows. That's going to be a really great resource if you're starting to build workflows. Um, another uh, webinar that we're going to have upcoming um, in the next couple of months is going to be specific on journeys. So we're going to go through building a, building a journey, um, integrating, you know, activating groups, activating uh, workflows, uh, trials, all that good stuff. So I highly recommend you stay on the lookout for that. Uh, that's going to be a really great um, webinar for those of you who are looking to dive in, dive deeper into creating uh, customer.